Hello and welcome to the Clicks 2020 Customer Showcase. My name is Bonnie Robinson and I'm one of the account managers here at Communicator. And I'm delighted to be able to present and highlight some of the great work that just a few of our customers have achieved this year. And while we would normally like to do this in person and celebrate with you all and also issue some awards, it's not really possible this year uh, due to COVID. We would still like to highlight and just really celebrate some of the great work and achievements that some of our customers have done. So presenting that today, you've obviously got myself, you've got Jamero Rahman as well, one of the account managers, and Adam Bradford as well. We'll be highlighting uh, just some of the great work that one of our customers has done this year, and we wanted to share that with you in terms of uh, what can be done as well, and hopefully offer some inspiration. So to get us all started, i um, just like to highlight Park Dean Resorts. For those of you who don't know about them, they were established in 99 and are an award-winning national holiday park that operates 67 parks across the whole of the UK with the objective of creating amazing memories. Now, it's fair to say that the travel and tourism sector has uh, been hit with quite a lot of challenges this year. There's been a lot of uh, restrictions, changes, starting, stopping, and this has caused a lot of confusion as well as challenges that the sector has had to face this year. And I think everyone's aware of uh, what's been happening nationally and locally uh, due to the COVID restrictions that have been in place. And one of the great, greatest challenges that I think we've had as a business is having to adapt and change the way that we work. And this has also been um, very prevalent for, for Park Dean just due to the physical requirements that were required at their parks to ensure that they were uh, looking after their um, customers in a COVID safe manner and adhering to all of the changing local uh, guidelines as well as the, um, the different parts of the UK uh, that were being rolled out. Off the back of this, there's obviously been a lot of um, customer uh, uncertainty in terms of not really knowing uh, whether they were able to attend a booking that they'd um, previously made, what was going to happen down the line, if a restriction was going to change in the location that we're based at or where the park was located. So there's been a lot of uncertainty. And this has also led to a bit of uh, inconsistent and irregular demand uh, due to restrictions being lifted and then added back on and customers just uh, not really knowing what exactly the future held. There's been quite a lot of challenges I think one of the key things that uh, Park Dean have done is using this opportunity really to uh, take stock and revisit uh, their whole journey, both um, within email, but also on other channels as well. And one of the things that they did was uh, to launch uh, the brand new uh, branding. Uh, this started off online on their website, uh, but was actually uh, reflected and updated uh, right across through their email journeys starting off with their pre-arrival journeys. And they also use this as an opportunity to implement some design best practice uh, that we'd identified working alongside them as part of some sessions that we did uh, at the back end of last year and early this year. And as part of that, they were really able to uh, utilize and leverage uh, the email communication channel um, to really relay some of the key changes that were required um, due to COVID and everything that's been happening surrounding that. And that's been a really a great win this year of just really being able to communicate to their customers uh, to keep them up to date and informed of all of the changes that were required um, at the parks and what they can expect when the customers were due to arrive. And one of the great highlights and uh, key things that they did was the introduction uh, of the new contactless check-in that really allowed them to um, communicate some of the key changes and what exactly the details were um, for those customers and what they were required to do uh, once they arrived at the parks. And this has uh, been initially rolled out uh, by email and they are plans to implement this as well, which are undergoing onto SMS as well. So just been some great um, initiatives that they've used this time. Uh, that has been quite challenging for a number of us uh, of COVID to really implement some great changes and achieve some breakthrough uh, results. So I'm just gonna highlight uh, a couple of those for you today and show you uh, what they've done specifically around the design elements uh, within their emails. 
So as you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, um, this is an interactive part of an email that they recently sent out. This gives the customer or the recipient the ability to toggle and choose uh, between two options within um, the, the email that they received, whether they prefer a seven night option or shorter break. And it's just a great way of uh, bringing in some interactivity that uh, will result in better engagement and also a higher through, uh, click through rate um, for those emails that were sent. Another great idea, which I really loved is the uh, gamification of the ability to select um, a park based on um, a criteria that the uh, recipient was asked to go through um, by making some logical decisions, as you can see there on the right hand side. And it's just a great little fun way that allows you to interact with the email, click and reveal a few different options based on your preferences or choices, and then navigate through to the relevant landing page for that park. But as I mentioned earlier on as well, they use this time to uh, launch the brand new uh, branding. Um, and alongside this, they decided to also include in their emails um, as part of the, the rebranding um, of the pre-arrival journeys, the uh, inclusion of animated uh, videos and GIFs and interactive elements. And I think this has been a real key win for them in terms of uh, just making their uh, email stand out and just really leveling up and doing something a little bit different. I think bring a little bit of sunshine to all of us um, as we sort of uh, wish that we could be somewhere and enjoy a bit of sunshine. But addressing, I guess, the biggest elephant in the room for a lot of consumers um, around the uncertainty was the launch of the new uh, price promise that, um, that they introduced. This was introduced at the very start of the first lockdown um, prior to when they uh, introduced the new branding. So that's an example here as well that you can see on the right hand side. And this was done um, as a sort of a standalone campaign, but then also implemented and reinforced um, throughout the journey and further communications that the recipients received and was highlighted in the footer. I think that was just a great way of just reaffirming a customers of a new initiative that they'd rolled out um, as a business, just to really give peace of mind and communicate that message and really supporting the customers as they make their bookings. And all of this translated into some great results, which I just wanted to share with you today. Despite the changing, um, I guess, requirements and demands uh, of consumers and uh, the constant stopping and starting that we're faced, we're still able to achieve, um, when you compare the figures from year, year on year to last year, a 2% two, two increase in open rate because of the work they've done, because of the focus on interactive elements and improving the design, they saw an increase in the click rate. Um, and that's translated to the best figure, which you can see there of a 6% increase in the click to open rate. And something as well that um, I think is just a great example of how good design can really improve the stats as well. Um, even though their content bounce rate was really low to start off with, they were actually able to reduce that further um, just by implementing some design best practice and that can be seen there as well by that reduction of 0.45% in the content bounce rate. So just really wanted to highlight that and say well done to Park Dean again for leveling up in your emails and delivering an exceptional uh, experience for your recipients. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Now I'm going to um, speak talk about uh, Power Tool World, who are an online retailer. Uh, they, they sell things like, um, as they're... Um, you know, sort of name says, power tools and uh, batteries and basically home improvement equipment. Um, and they are also, of course, um, deal with trade. Now, because they're an online retailer, a lot of their advertising and marketing is through email marketing. Um, so they'll send out newsletters or offer emails um, and that kind of thing. So it's very, very important that they these campaigns actually work well for them and they actually get the results that they uh, want. So a lot of their um, campaigns are um, based on conversions, open rates, click rates, or because they are um, predominantly promotions that they um, send out. Now for um, this, what we're going to be talking about is a campaign that Power Tool World actually sent out back in April uh, this year. And as you, uh, if you can remember, obviously that was when the that was the pandemic, and um, our inboxes were um, full of communications from businesses um, to 
communicate of course um, important updates and also you'll find that and there was um, a lot of things happening in our inboxes. So, um, and obviously with the kind of business that Power Tool World are, they considered sending out this campaign, which is usually when they send out a spring uh, sale campaign. And because obviously a lot of people were stuck at home, they were doing home improvements, they thought this was the best opportunity to increase their sales and um, kind of get their word out a lot more and um, get a lot more conversions. Um, so there were a number of things that they had to consider. So of course, like I said, we had very, very busy um, inboxes. So how can they actually stand out from our busy inboxes? Um, now there's a number of things that they would have to consider, things like your um, subject line, when you send, what type of email you're going to be sending, um, how to actually push them offers um, as well. And so do we actually mention something in our subject line to make us stand out and actually potentially say that there's an offer? Um, they also had to say how they could actually increase their conversion, their clicks and their opens. So of course, you want people to open your email, you want to then um, have them click and then of course convert. Now when we say conversions um, and clicks, are we? Uh, they had to also think, right, they're gonna have a lot of call to actions or if they have one or maybe multiple, do we have a dedicated landing page? Now how does that journey look when this customer clicks on this link will it then take us onto a um a landing page for that product or does it take us into the home page or a, a page with multiple products uh, there's a number of things because of course as a um business you don't want to make it difficult for somebody to buy from you, you we don't want to make it confusing because we want it to be quite an easy process and that journey should be easy so that they kind of come back to you time and time again. Um, and of course, we need to make sure that the communication here is that this is um, a key offer, um, that there will be, of course, um, something in that email that's going to be relevant to that person. And it needed, there was a number of things that they had to actually think, right, is this the right time for starters? And when should they be actually thinking of um, sending. Now, that was the, of course, the bulk of it and what they had to do. So we're now gonna, of course, have a look at the campaign itself. Now, as you can see, this is a promotional campaign. Um, it's all about um, a sale and um, it is something that um, is very product-led. So let's have a look at the subject line first of all. So this subject line says Jumeirah, get 5% off today only. So what does that tell us? This is a personalised uh, subject line, which is always good because it means that they are capturing as much data as possible for that uh, for their customers. And it really makes me think that this offer is for me. Um, and it's also telling me what the offer is and that it's today only, which is time limited. So it's pushing that consumer or in in this case myself to open up and find out what this time limited offer is and if there's anything that is actually appealing to me um now when i open up this email you can see that there's a promo code that's clearly visible um and if you think about this is of course on the desktop but if it was on mobile that big header image where it's telling me that it's a five percent off with that promo code and um, it will be the first thing that i see on my mobile as well so it's way above the email fold I don't have to do much to see that promo code, which means that even if I didn't want to look further uh, down the email, I could go onto their website and use that code and potentially buy. So that is really, really good. Um, so, and then if we look at these um, buttons, so the call to actions that we have, so there's numerous call to actions, different copies. So we've got things like shop now, we have the um, Makita, um, product as well we've also got the gardening um so these are taking us to different landing pages these are um relevant to that um obviously whatever i click on to so in case so that they've kind of covered their back here so the the shop now takes us onto the general products page but then further down they've got it quite um specific to certain brand and um, certain products so these might be products that they actually are pushing to sell more. 
at this time of year which it is their gardening tools or what they actually want people to buy and of course their makita it covers a lot of drills and um you know sort of handheld tools um that they could actually sell as well um and you can see that the branding is really really good as well so this is very consistent with their website which is always always important so i want to be able to click on a link and for it to then take me onto a website that has the same um, branding same um logo same kind of feel of it and it should be just as easy to navigate so that is really really important and um, so as a on a whole this email is really really nice it's very clean it's very straight to the point now there's another thing that actually um they included which um is at the bottom of the email so you'll see it's got kind of sections in this email and this is the um kind of a peace of mind so going back to what um when it is that we actually sent this email so this email went out in april um there was a lot of uncertainty with delivery with um you know warehouses and businesses functioning and the way, the way that they're going to be functioning so this is actually a gift that um power to world included in their emails at that time and this shows their packaging process now this is re I think is really really powerful because they are actually saying that they can still offer their usual services if um you know including their next day delivery even when um they, all of this is going on. So as a consumer that's really important to me because if I'm placing an order um I want to know that that is going to be um fulfilled and it's going to be uh, on time. And this kind of shows me that as a business, that this has, hasn't affected them um, in, in terms of servicing me and their service level is still there. And the thought and process that's actually gone into designing this campaign really shows in their results. Their in conversion rate increased by 1% compared to last year. And they, act they had a really, really good open rate on this campaign, which was over 45% at 45.28%, which makes it one of their most opened emails this year. So that tells me that the subject line that they've used when they've actually decided to send that email has really helped with that. And um, in comparison, their year-on-year -year, um, open rate has increased by 1.36%. Um, and that, again, tells me that they are really... Um, you know utilizing this opportunity that opportunity to kind of send out while their recipients are the most engaged and their click to open rate had an increase of over two percent year on year so this is has been a really really um a successful campaign for power to world and well done to them for doing so well and of course it just shows that when you use that kind of best practice with um you know with the emails and when you're going to be sending out it really does have an impact on your results thank you very much and well done to power tool world for doing so well in this campaign and i really hope you found that useful i will now pass it over to adam who will be covering sports clubs Thanks for that, Jamera. I'm Adam, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the work our sports clubs have done throughout this year. As we all know, coronavirus has had a major impact on all of our lives, with many of our favourite activities restricted or put on hold while we try to reduce the impact of the pandemic. Many of us will be sports fans, and this is one of the sectors that's been impacted. Sport is a large sector for us here at Communicator, and alongside our partnership with Sports Alliance, we have over 120 sports clubs and organisations. Back on 13th of March, many of the world's sporting events, including the Premier League, the English Football League and Women's Super League, were postponed until April initially. And it wasn't until June that some of these events would resume, albeit under very different circumstances, without fans in the stadium. As with the seasonality of sport, the marketing plans for sports clubs follow a regular pattern based on the game schedule. This includes keeping fans engaged with news, match previews, post-match reports and community updates, but also essential revenue generating activities such as ticket sales and retail offers. During the off-season, 
regular market activities are similar year on year with player transfer news, kit launches and fixture announcements. But the postponement of events through the marketing plan into disarray and the unknown. First of all, email, as I'm sure you're all well aware, has been a key messaging tool during this year, especially for service messages, company updates and messages from the CEO. Clubs have used email to communicate with fans about game postponements, season ticket refunds and the relaunch of the season and also to provide streaming codes to fans so they can follow all of the action at home. During this period, clubs have had to be imaginative in their campaigns to continue with fan engagement, all without the regular games and calendar events they'd normally be following, and it's this area that I'm going to focus on today. Let's head to Football Club Norwich City. The marketing team at Norwich took a hands-on approach to seek out new content to share with their fans. Norwich City provided fans with messages of support from players, updates on how they're helping in the community, and also reruns of important games in the club's history in the traditional 3 p.m. Saturday afternoon slot. And I'm going to show you a couple of my favourite campaigns here. The first one is a Q&A session with player Kenny McLean. As part of a fan update, Norwich gave uh, fans the opportunity to pose their questions to Kenny. So to do this, Norwich included a link to a data capture form, as you can see here, where fans would submit their questions. And then the marketing team were able to select the best questions and put these to Kenny. This was followed up with a Q&A session filmed at home in lockdown by Kenny. Norwich City are experiencing using video and email. So the obvious choice here was to use live click as video functionality. This displays the video embedded in the email without the recipient having to navigate away into a different browser. This message alone had over 20,000 unique opens, and it's one of the most popular emails that Norwich City have ever sent. Considering the circumstances, I think that's quite a, quite a feat and a, a real success. My second highlight here has a bit of a retro theme. Spot the Ball was a mainstay of newspaper sports pages and during the brainstorm for ideas, the idea of modernizing this and bringing it into the 21st century come to the fore. So to execute this, Norwich again used the data capture form capability and communicator. This allowed fans to submit their guesses for a bit of retro fun. Once games started up again in June, one key aspect missing was the fans. In the UK, only as recently as last week, have fans been able to return to the stadium, but in very limited numbers, of course. One of the key changes to football during the pandemic has been the opening up of television rights and providing fans with streaming codes for the games where they've been so far unable to attend and they can watch those games at home. Email has been pivotal in this new aspect and clubs have been able to share unique codes with fans and the instructions on how to access the games. And over the past few months, over 800,000 unique codes have been shared with fans. I hope you've enjoyed our spotlight of the successes of our clients over the past 12 months. We hope to be able to uh, host you again next year at the Clicks Awards. Um, but any questions relating to the campaigns we've shared with you today, please send us an email at accountmanagement at communicatorcore.com and the respective account manager will be in contact with you soon. Thanks again.